I might have already mentioned this, but I have built myself a new fabrication table. It is 42 inches by 42 inches. The frame is built out of 2 inch 083 box tubing. The top is quarter inch thick and it's about 35 inches tall and it has adjustable feet so that I can move it around my garage and level it as I need because there is not a single level surface in this garage. And I welded it all together with my TIG welder and it was a pain in the butt. It was enjoyable, but it took forever. And I wanna build another one of these and get rid of the wooden table. And I wanna show you how to build one and probably provide you plans if you're interested in building something like this. But to make my job easier and to speed up all of my welding projects, I bought myself a new piece of equipment. So we'll unbox it together. I went and bought myself a Millermatic 141. Yes, a Millermatic 141 120 volt or 110 volt. And the reason I'm sticking with 110 volt is because that's all I have in my shop. My TIG welder is a 110 220 convertible. Um, so I can do one or the other, but all of the projects that I've welded together in the shop have all been on 110. And because everything that I've welded together so far has stayed in one piece, with an exception of one aluminum weldment. <laughs> um, I think sticking with 110 is fine for in the garage for now. Eventually I will be running 220 out here, but that's in the future by quite a bit. So we're gonna stick with 110. Uh, so I went out and bought myself the MIG and a bottle of shielding gas, and we're gonna open this up together. So, things that are included is a manual, some other accessories with a hose that looks like the hose for the gas attachment, a regulator, the MIG gun, and the welder itself. While I was at the welding supply store, I bought myself some 030 ER70S-6. That's hard to read upside down. Yes, mild steel MIG, because that's all I plan on welding on this. If you are interested in getting one of these, one of the things I do believe is it requires a 20 amp breaker. My house, when I first bought it, had 15 amp breakers on basically everything, so I had to upgrade everything to 20 amp. So that is what I'm using the TIG on. It's a just a regular house 20 amp breaker, and everything works fine. I don't have any issues with it. Um, I only had the fuse blow once, and that was because I was running the heater, and well, it's, the heater turned on at the same time that I was welding. And that was the only time that I ever popped the breaker. Um, so I just don't have the heater and the welder going on at the same time. This welder also supports flux core welding, so if you don't want to bother with the tank of gas or if you're welding outside away from 
whatever off of a generator and it's windy outside, you can use a flux core wire instead of a MIG wire inside this machine as well. The settings are a little bit different and you can find many YouTube videos on what the difference is, but this is capable. If some of you are curious about why I decided to go with the Miller 141 instead of the Lincoln 140C, it's because I flipped the coin and it landed on heads and that's what I picked. Um, they're both pretty much equivalent. I've read many reviews and people are happy with both of them. There's a little bit of fanboying on going on, whether it's blue or red, but it really doesn't matter. Both of them are great, and I'll be putting my experience to this one to see what it's like. I think it'll be more than capable of what I have as long as I stay within the limits. Now we'll install the grounding clamp, pull off a couple washers and a nut, and you take the grounding wire, thread it through the handle against the clamp, put in a flash wash, a flash washer, a flat washer, put in a locking washer, which does absolutely nothing. Tighten the nut down. It's a 10 millimeter if you're interested. Go ahead and cinch this down pretty good. Um, as it heats up and cools down, it'll want to loosen up. So a little extra hmm, won't hurt. Just don't go too much. It looks like it has a bearing or a bushing on the spool, so you can tighten this nut down as much as you want, and it'll still spin. All right, I went and got the light, moved the camera to see what I'm doing. Before feeding the wire in, we're gonna stick this plug in through the front first, and then we're gonna slide the main gun in and press up until it stops. Then we're gonna tighten down this wing nut and this goes one way like this and twist on tuck the wire in And with the wire through, it's sticking out of the gun. We're gonna pull the gas nozzle off. And we're gonna thread the electrode nozzle on, or whatever this is called. I guess hand tight. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say what this knob should be set to. It gives you a test where you shoot this into a piece of wood and if it slips, you need to tighten it. If it curls up, you're good. We're gonna set it uh, that much and just be done with it. We'll come back to it if I need to. With everything set up in here, we can close the door. And we have jumped ahead a few minutes. I have gone ahead and connected the tank of gas, opened up the regulator, moved everything around just so that I can do a test weld. I will be welding on the back side because I don't have anything protecting the camera lens. So I have set it to right between 14 and eighth inch, 14 gauge and eighth inch material because this is 083. I have left it on the automatic feed for 030, which is a little blue indicator over here. And I'm gonna drop my hood and pull the trigger and we're gonna see what happens. 
I'm most likely going to get a sunburn. That was a little too easy, <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm really impressed about how quick that was to get it set up and start welding. Now that I have this, I am very excited getting into building the second table and showing you how to do that, as well as welding up a couple pieces of furniture. If you all had noticed, there's something sitting over my shoulder that I have been steadily working on. Um, I have recently ordered all the parts for it it is coming we're going to get it back together and i've got big news about the little truck so thank you for joining um if you had watched this for a review on the unboxing of the miller miller matic 141 i hope you found this information useful whether or not you go with the miller or the lincoln you should have the exact same experience but i mean this little thing is going to be amazing for me. So thank you for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.